All right, guys, so this is my kind of version of the Devon pouch. Uh, these are not exact measurements. I also won't be giving you my measurements because I feel like that takes away from the person that made the pattern. Uh, but I looked at it and went, okay, this is what size I want. Um, so the first thing I am going to say is that my lining piece is a square. Um, and then I've got a zip. I suppose it can't hurt to tell you my zip size. So it's a six inch zip and I'm using my beautiful matching fabric. So I'm doing like a whole massive set with my handbag. So I'm going to do this. This is actually going to be my medicine pouch. So I'm going to have like, you know, some eye wash and some band-aids and some Panadol and stuff that just forever lives in my bag. And why not make them all cute and adorable and matching? So I've just sewn along the top of the zip and then I'm going to top stitch just the one part, like so. And then I always like my zips to go from left to right, so I'm just going to pop, I'm using chunky zips so that they match my bag, so I'm just going to pop one of those. I'm using my zipper jig. Um, which in any of my other videos you guys would have seen, it's just a fork that's been bolted to a, um, a clamp, like a table, no, see that, that is not correct, if you get this little buckle, pull it off and do it again, and it's supposed to be smooth and glorious, and that time I put them in, that just means that I put them in crooked, and again crooked. Oh my goodness, what is going on this morning? So everybody in my household is still asleep. So I'm just doing like a sneaky little video right now. All right, there we go. So now it sits nice and smooth. That's what we want. So I'm just gonna put the zipper in the middle so that everything's out of the way. And then I'm gonna take my lining pocket. Oh, so this is my um, waterproof canvas. And I've actually turned it for the pocket because I want it to be super shiny. So that right side is actually this side. But I'm going with shiny because, I don't know, it's a menacing thing. And I want it to be shiny, I guess. So I'm just going to tack this right along the edge. So I'm sewing as close to the edge as I can. I'm still going to backstitch because I need it locked in. So that is now just holding my pocket closed. Now if you wanted to, you could make that pocket longer so it's a bigger pocket, um, but I literally just wanted to put like my packet of the pill in, so I have it big enough. So then I've cut two of these and I've cut them opposite, which is obviously important. So I'm going to put the first one on. So I want my cutout to be on the outside. So you can lay it next to it and then just flip it on top of it like so and I'm making sure that the bottom is all lined up um, I don't care as much if the top's too long but I, I want to, I don't want to lose any of my little cutout in the corner so I lined the bottom up instead of the top um, you can sew it from the top or the bottom this one I'm going to sew from the bottom up but I just want to again make sure that my pocket is actually folded over within the seam allowance of what I'm sewing, which I am using quarter of an inch. Back stitch. So now when I flip that over, my pattern pieces aren't perfect. So what I can do is while it's sitting there, I'm going to take my vinyl cutting scissors. So these are class A uh, knife edge. And I'm just going to chop that so it's even. Awesome. So that was a little bit of wastage. Um, I could probably go and amend my pattern. I got hubby to do them out of um, MDF again for me so that I can just trace around them. So now I'm just going to fold over the vinyl and top stitch it down because it's going to look prettier. Like that. And I really like this colour thread with this vinyl. So this vinyl, ugh, I can't remember what it's called. It's like 
I don't know, I call it teal, but that's not what it's officially called. And then I'm using the turquoise thread from Varden and Threads. And I'll put a link down the bottom for you guys. Alright, so now we've got a top stitch so it looks pretty. And now we're going to put along our top panel, which is this piece here. So I'm going to put right sides together and go back down to a joining stitch size, which for me is two and a half. And then again, I'm just going to quarter inch sew. So, and this should run along right up next to the zip. So what I need to do is I'm going to open the zip all the way down and stitch most of the way and then stop with my needle down and zip it up the other way so it's out of the way. And then continue sewing across there like so. Then I'm going to turn it up to three and three quarters, which is the same I did the other one. And I want to fold this one onto itself. So normally I would let that fold down, but I don't want that to happen today. I want to sew it onto itself with a crease because that's going to sit nicer for the zipper. So I'm just putting pressure with my fingers to hold that fold down nicely. And that's the outside done. And then if you look in the zipper pocket, so long as you caught both the edges, it is an official zipper pocket where nothing will fall out. And it's super cute. Okay, so now I'm going to take my other zip and this zip for me is eight inches long and I'm gonna put my zipper head on now. So again, you know what, I'll bring this over. Oh, you guys won't be able to see it because of the angle of the camera. But basically you split your zip just a little bit and then you feed both sides in. Now, I personally find it easier to do it if I'm standing. Okay, so zipper's on. And now I have these two little things. So these are my zipper tab ends. Um, so my zip, because it's a size 5, is 1 and a quarter inches wide. So I have cut two 1 and a quarter inch squares. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of double-sided tape so that they stay still while I'm trying to sew them and just stick it it doesn't even have to be down the middle just anywhere along there to hold it in place like so and then I'm gonna just rub it on what that does is that heats up the glue so it's more likely to stick to your vinyl um, Otherwise, you might just peel the whole lot off. So then what I'm going to do with my hands is I'm actually going to fold it in half, but without pushing it down, and then just insert the zip all the way to the end and squish it down. So it won't sit perfectly, but it will stay on so you can sew it. So I'm going to put both ends on, and then I'll go ahead and sew both of them. So I'm going to stick with my three and three quarter stitch length, uh, because I don't want to over perforate my vinyl. So that's folded in half lovely. I'm also not going to back stitch because the edge of these will be in a seam. So I'm stitching about one eighth of an inch from the edge of the vinyl. And I'm also making sure that I'm doing it right side up because that's the side you'll see. And I just ran out of fob and thread right then, which worked out pretty well, actually. So now you've got the zipper, your zip's on, and your ends are tabbed. So now it's just a matter of putting the pieces together. But first, I need... So how I actually do this is I cut my thread and leave some of it in the machine so that it's easy to pull through later. And normally this is the time when I would oil my bobbin, uh, but my child has taken the little plunger thing that I use. So I have like a little medicine plunger um, from my child's medicine. 
and I just take some oil out of the bed and just squirt it on the bourbon thing because the guy who I not so much bought the machine off but I take it to for repairs he told me that if I oil that every time I wind a bobbin, it will um, make it mm, further between services. So if I do that, I'll probably never really need to get it serviced unless something actually breaks. So I obviously listen to his advice because services aren't cheap. I'm just chopping off the tail and then I'm going to wind a full bobbin. Um, so I'm not doing the wristlet strap on these because I'm using it for a medicine cabinet. But there, so if you wanted to do a wristlet strap, you could either add like a little D-ring here, or you could just make sure that you're using a zipper that has a hole, and then you could clip a wristlet strap directly to the zipper. Um, entirely up to you which way you'd like to do that. Um, all of my zippers, uh, all of my wristlet straps, always I make them 14 inches long. And then you can just make them as wide as you need according to your hardware that you're using. So on this one, a half or three quarter inch strap would look really cute. Um, if I was making one, I would be making one inch because that's the only hardware I've got. So I've only got one inch um, lobster claw things. Um, but yeah. Or you could do like me and just not make one, have it for other things. So I'm going all out with my new bag set. I've decided I'm going to do a Demi Wallet by Lynn's Handmade because I probably don't need a huge handbag like I carry. So I'm just not going to. All right. So do I want it shiny on the inside or not? No, I don't think I will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my zip and I'm going to make sure, well actually this is a really good way to do it. If you always struggle with your zips, put the right side, because so you want the zip on this way so that sits up like that. So the best way to do it is you need that edge on that edge, like so. So you flip it over. Flip the zip over um, so that it's wrong sides together because eventually we're going to have to go two right sides at a wrong side and so now's a good time to do it. So before I go pinning everything I'm actually going to center this zip so you should have at least half an inch depending on what seam allowance you're using and what pattern you're using you should have at least half an inch either side of the zip at the end because we're not going to sew the end of the zipper tab we're just going to sew like as close next to it as we can get i'm going to actually open that zip because i'm going to start sewing from this end and then i'm going to put i decided not to do shiny silver on the inside although if you did buy a color off me that you don't super love flip it over and have silver it's like reflective and fun okay I probably didn't need to do that. So I like to always sew with my um, right side up. That's just me. You don't have to do that. I'm just going to pull this. So here's my zipper tab, he, uh, my zipper pull here. So I'm going to stop right before it. I'm not going to try and be clever and sew past it because it never works. Unless you're actually putting a zipper foot on, in which case it probably doesn't so much. As you can see, I'm not doing that. So, And then I'm just going to fold over just the top and then crank up the stitch length, make it more decorative. So you don't have to turn your stitch length up to three and three quarters or four or whatever your decorative length is. I just do it because you can see more of the thread so it makes it more decorative on top. But you don't have to do that. chop off all the tails because we're back where we started and that is now one side done and so now you can see the zips will stop at the same end which is you know what we want so then I'm just going to take a lining piece and line that up
And so I, I actually struggle to um, pin all three perfectly at the same time. So I find it much easier for myself if I pin two and then just come along and add the third one in. Because you can kind of just set it where you need to and then just re-clip the area. Super easy, right? Oh, back down to a joining stitch, which was two and a half for me. And again, my zipper pull is here, so I want to pull it down a little bit. Stop with my needle down and then zip it back up. There we go. Crank the stitch length back up again. Fold just the top over. So you want to make sure it's actually folding because it will sit nicer. And then I did a little back stitch. Isn't that lovely? All right. So now I'm going to open that three quarters of the way and I'm going to open this one halfway just so I don't accidentally kind of stitch it in anywhere. And so now what I want to do, if you want to, you can use clips. Um, I will do one for you guys. But basically we're going to stitch an inch on the inch on the um, lining end and then all the way down, all the way across and back and then box the corners. So I'm going to start here and I'm just, again, I'm just using a quarter inch seam allowance. You can use more if you want to, who makes you happier to do that. Alright, so that's it for there. I just need to do a little bit. And then I'm going to come and do a little bit here. And I'm going to start here. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that my vinyl lines up with itself. And then stitching over. And then back stitching because I'm at an edge. And then twist to pivot. Back stitch. Sew along. Get to the edge and back stitch. And then the last one. So I'm going to start it, back stitch, and then I'm going to come up and I'm going to line up my vinyl at the top. Whoops, that did not line up, I pulled that. Stitch along my back stitch. So that's now all my sides done, now I just need to box my little corners. I'm just snipping the joins between them. Um, and I might actually start on the lining side. So what you want to do is you want to open it up. Now these are really little box corners. Uh, but if you can get your finger in there. Stick your finger in. And then just kind of pinch it out. So you want to line up the seam in the middle. And then have one seam allowance go one way. And the other seam allowance go the other way. And then just so a quarter of an inch along and making sure that we backstitch at both ends and even though that's really small and there's probably only four stitches that didn't get a backstitch you still need to backstitch so then we come to the other end so if you can't get your fingers in just kind of um stick your fingers on and do this i don't know what that's called but do that to be able to pull it out and then you want to make sure that this is going the same way as this one so that it will sit flat on the bottom of the bag and then we're just going to pop that under stitch forward back and then back stitch at the end as well we're going to do the same over here so the vinyl may not be as forgiving as the lining, because obviously the lining is thinner and more flexible. Okay. So then, I'm, again, I'm just going to line up the seams and then squish it and make it flat. 
and then sew a quarter inch, making sure I back stitch. And then trim the tails and throw them in the bin or on the floor because I just missed the bin, but I tried. I feel like that counts. All right, so then that one's going that way. That one's going that way. Backstitch, along, backstitch. Ha ha. Excellent. So now we're just going to, I'm going to kind of gather it up till I get to a corner and then push the corner through. And so then you can stick your hand, if you left a hole big enough, you can stick your hand in. I'm gonna pop that up, and then I'm gonna come and push on the corners, and then Poke that one out as well. And then I just have this closing to stitch shut. Now I'm actually going to change my thread over to a silver. Because I don't want to see a black, bright blue stitching along the bottom. That doesn't look cool. I'm just going to chop off the other one. Tie on the new thread to the old thread that's still threaded through the machine. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. And then just pull through the old colour. Oh, hold on. What's going on here? I think I jammed it in there that I did. There we go. Okay. So if it's not coming freely, just um, fiddle with your tension spring and it can usually fit through anyway. All right. One full rotation brings your lining up. So then I'm just going to push. I'm still going to push on these seams here because I want to make sure that everything is out and there's no holes before I stitch it shut. So I'm just gonna pinch it, put the insides in, a couple of stitches forwards and backwards to set them. Would you look at that? I got it all done before anybody got out of bed. How adorable is that? So yeah, I love this little pouch. This will be a great little like first aid kit for me. Um, the video makes the zip look a little bit wavy, but it's not. So if you're finding that your zip's looking wavy, a good way to see if it truly is or not is actually grab here and just kind of pull because sometimes there's something pulling it in which makes it look wavy. I know that my zip's fine. See? Look at that. Straightened it. All you have to do is kind of tug here and pinch this proper corner so that it's not pulling on anything. And there you go. Straight zip. I hope this uh, little tutorial was fun guys, uh, feel free to show me what you make or even come and comment and tell me what you use your Devon version of, or version of a Devon pouch for. Um, until next time, bye guys!